Welcome back to the first video in level nine. Uh, this level is all about working with instant IDs. Now, instance IDs are something that are already built into GameMaker for you. Just like every object has an X position, a Y position, a speed, a direction, there's also a variable called ID. And uh, just to prove that every object has an ID, let's just fiddle with our sample file here. Right now I have this thing called a monster. And there's already a bit of code in there, but you can see that when the draw event of the monster runs, I have a little code I'm running here. I draw the monster sprite. I draw their hit points out right below their hit points, or let's do it right above their hit points. I'm going to draw the ID variable out. So X minus 10. Let's go Y minus 50. And string ID. Now remember, I'm coding inside the monster, and so the monster has this ID variable built in. When objects are placed into the room, GameMaker will give each object a value for its ID. And the way that I believe it works is GameMaker basically starts counting at 1 million. And so the first piece you put in might be piece 1 million. Then the next ID that's given out is a million and one, a million and two, and it just keeps counting up like that. That way you can just sort of keep going almost forever, right? As you add pieces into your game. Now, let's see how this works. So we're going to see some hit points, and then we'll see the ID. And remember, that's just above it. So we'll see these million values when we run this program here. And then we'll start to work with them. So there you go. Uh, I actually have the R key. can just reset the game. So you can see here that every time the room is started, these pieces are made. And you can see right here, there's piece of million. So that was the first one added into the room. This one is a piece of million and one, and then you see a million and two, a million and three. And every time I reset, you know, you get the idea. So this variable is called ID, and it's unique. No other piece will have an ID of a million. No other piece will have an ID of a million and three. That's like its unique identifier, right, to tell it apart from every other object in the game. Okay, now let's do some stuff with it. So the first thing I'm going to do is let's just take that out now that you've seen it. I'll just take that little ID line out of there. And my first task is I'm going to give the player a command. And the player is going to find who the farthest enemy is and destroy them. Okay, so let's go to player. Let's add an event. I'm going to do this in just a key press, so I can press the key once. And since I'm looking for the farthest, I'll use letter F. And let's add a little bit of code here. And here we go. Now, if you haven't popped open the cheat sheet, there's a nice little cheat sheet for this uh, level called the Instance Cheat Sheet 1. And you can see here, I've put down some scripts that are already built into GameMaker that are really useful when you're dealing with Instance IDs. So a couple of them that are, you see here, we keep scrolling down. One of them is instance furthest. You name an X and a Y position in the room and what type of object you're looking for. And it will return the ID. So yeah, it's going to send back a number like a million and three. If ghost a million and three, or I should say if instance a million and three is the farthest one, it's going to send me back a million and three. If it's a million and two, it'll return a million and two. So that's what this is here, right? Returns the ID, okay, of the nearest, but in this case, it'll be the furthest object. So let's go back here and let's try this out. So I'll say, find ID of furthest monster. Now you'll notice in this program, um, I've just named my things. There's no O's this time. They're just sort of named like they're named here. <clears throat> so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this. I'm going to say, uh, I'll call it furthest monster equals. And now I'll use that script that's already pre-written in GameMaker for us. So instance furthest. Now it expects an X and a Y position. Well, I want to do it from the player's X and Y. And I am coding in the player. So I can just say from my X and Y. And I'm looking for monster objects. So what this is going to send me back, that returns a number, the ID 
of that monster that's really far away. Now, what am I going to do with it? Do something with this monster. Now, I'm not going to do something nice here. I'm just going to destroy it. So this is one thing that you can do once you have an ID. This is the ID saved inside of that variable. So that's like a million three. Let's take control of it with furthest mon. So this is one way you can do it, okay, with the with statement. Once we say with this monster, the monster is now going to run whatever code we put in here. So I'll just do something really fast here. Effect, create, below, EF ring, X, Y, 0. You don't have to do this one if you don't want to. See if red, and get the monster to destroy itself. So it's going to be gone. And that's it. So let's check this one out, see what happens, and uh, then we'll do a few more examples, and you'll get the hang of using these IDs. So remember, that was the F key. <clears throat> so I hit F, poof, furthest monster. Now this will be the furthest. Poof, F, F, F. Now, there's no monsters. What happens when I hit F? Okay, no errors. Nothing happens. Okay, that's okay. What happens here when I have no monsters left on the screen? This script still has to be sending me back a number. That's its job, right? Send back a number. But there's no, you know, million and six, million and twenty to send back. So what does it send back? This is a little weird, but when nothing exists, okay, this sends back the number negative four. Now, why negative four and not negative one? Um, don't ask me. It's just what it is in Game Maker. It's negative four. But what's really important to know is this number is less than zero. So we're actually going to use this later on. And uh, we have to know sometimes there is no monster you want to detect. Maybe nothing came back from the script. You can always ask if this number is less than zero. Because if it's less than zero, you know there was no monster sent back. And so I could do a quick little test here just to prove to you that this part does work. I could just quickly ask, whoops, if furthest mon is less than zero, show message no monsters on, how will this, no monsters in room. Okay. And then really, if there's no monsters left in the room, we should just exit, right? Get out of this script, right, this page here. There's no point in doing the bottom. So we give this little test here. I'll just hit the F key a couple of times. And there you go. It's sending back that negative 4 and then printing our little message for us. So just a little reminder, right? That will be equal to negative 4 if there's no monsters in the room. Okay. For the second example we're going to do for you, let's make it so that when the player will add a key press here, and the player presses the M key, and M is going to be my thing for move. I'm going to move the nearest monster, and I'm going to make it move up at a fast speed. So it'll basically go up and leave the screen. So I'm going to do something really similar here. So first I'm going to say find nearest monster ID. I'll just call this close ID, and I'll use this method a lot like the other one called instance nearest. This is on your cheat sheet. It's built into Game Maker script. And from my player XY, find the nearest monster. Now once I have it, make move up fast. What I'm going to do here, I could say with close ID and run some code, but I want to show you a slightly different way. What I can do is I can say, hey, close ID, which is a monster, right? You have to remember, this is something like a million and 17. I'll say, hey, a million 17, please set your speed. 2, 10. And please set your direction to 90. So it's moving up. Now, this works. Okay, Any ID you have, which represents an instance on the screen, you can use the dot to access its built-in variables. And so we can access the speed and access the direction. So this should work here as I hit the F key. Or sorry, as I hit the M key. So nearest monster moves up, and then, of course, 
The other guys come the nearest, but get ready. There's going to be trouble. When there's no more monsters on the screen, look at what happened here. Variable reference invalid, object negative 4. So remember we talked about when nothing's there, that method or script will still send you back a negative 4. The problem is, on my lines below it, right here, if close ID happens to be negative 4, you can't set the speed to negative 4 because that's not a real object. So you get the error. So what we want to show you in this example is before I bother trying to find the closest instance of monster, I'm going to do a little check. Are there any monsters in the room? Now, if you go to the cheat sheet, of course, GameMaker has a script that'll do this for us, and it's right near the top here. There's two that I can use, and I'll go through each one here and show you each one working. There's instance number, which will count how many you have and returns you the number of objects in the room. Or I can do instance exists. And I give it an object type or an ID, and it'll tell me true or false whether that object exists. And of course, if it doesn't exist, like negative 4 does not exist in the room, I can get out of there, don't bother writing any code. So let me try instance exists first, and then I'll show you with instance number. So here's what I could actually do. I'll take that out for a second. After I find close ID here, I could do this. If instance exists close ID equals false, get out of here. Okay? So basically, if a real ID comes back like a million and five, instance exists a million and five, that'll be true. It won't do this code. But if this ends up sending me back negative 4 because there's no monsters in the screen, negative 4 will be the value. Instance exists negative 4. That is not an instance that exists in the room. It's false. False does equal false. And we're going to exit out of here. So it's a nice check, right, before you continue on to do work. So it's one safety check you can do. Now, I'll put a second safety check in here. I'll take that one out. My second safety check is, are there any monsters in the room? And one way you could do is right off at the beginning, I could have said also, if instance exists, monster is false, exit. So see this instance exists. You can either give it, either, you can either give it an ID number, or you can give it the name of an object, and it'll just scan for all monsters and tell you whether they're in there or not. Okay, so those are two great methods, right, that can be used. So that's another check. Just get out of there if there's no monsters. Don't bother finding a close one. Now I'm going to comment that one out as well and give you one more. And that's, then that'll be the end of this video. The last one is this. I could just ask how many monsters there are and leave if there's no monsters. And that one is if instance number of monster is zero, exit out of here. Okay, so it's a little bit like instance exists, but this one actually counts, right? So this is probably the better one to use, but just showing you, you can do that one as well, right? Count the number of an object to have. Okay. Thanks for watching this video. We're going to cut that one here. Um, the next video, you have to watch before doing the challenges because it's going to go and take a look at how to pick random objects. So I'm going to say, hey, grab me one of the monsters out of the room. How do you pick one of the monsters? And there'll be a lot of new stuff in there too. So uh, digest this one and then go watch the next video. Then there'll be a couple challenges for you. Thanks for watching.